So last week, I saw Late Night with the Devil, and the movie blew me away. And I also analyzed it, spoiler free. But this time, I want to get into a full spoiler-filled breakdown of the entire thing, from the very beginning all the way to the very end. Including the Grove Club, the wife's death, the wife's ghost, Christu's death, Diablo's cult, Lily's possession, the demon Abraxas, the skeleton man in the crowd, the devil man, and the entire delusional, nightmarish ending to the movie. And I'll also be featuring some of your comments from the previous video along the way in this video to offer for some more insight and some new perspectives. So let's get started. The first thing I always want to do is establish the thematic foundation of this movie, just to make things more clear as we go from the very beginning to the very end. So this film, more than anything, is about one major question. What would you do to ensure your success? Meaning, what would you give up? What parts of your character would you compromise? And who would you let go of along the way? And this movie, literally and metaphorically through the supernatural, warns us about the price we pay for success in the wild, ruthless world of show business. So let's get into it from start to finish. The film starts with this opening mini documentary prologue. The prologue gives us a series of points about Jack Delroy's backstory. The Jack is the host of a late night show called Night Owls that was experiencing excellent ratings on cable television in the 70s. We also learn that he has a loyal wife, Madeline, who helped him along his rise all the way to the top. One eerie detail we learn is that Jack was rumored to have been regularly visiting a place called The Grove. The Grove is a highly exclusive club of elite, rich, powerful men who meet mysteriously in the middle of the woods. And Jack gained access to this club through his newly developed connections in show business. The film mentions The Grove, which alludes to the Bohemian Grove where their meetings take place. The influence of secret societies and the general public is great, and the film touches on this crucial point. Personally, I think you're spot on. I think I just used the term cult maybe a little too loosely, but your comment actually brings me perfectly into my next point on this topic. The Grove in the film is a reference to the restricted campground in Monterio, California, called the Bohemian Grove, founded in 1878. Just like the Grove in the film, this campground was run by only the most prominent business leaders, government officials, former US presidents, senior media executives, and the most famous Hollywood actors and musical artists. There have been countless mysteries and rumors around what goes on in this club, including the planning of catastrophic world events, the worship of demons, and rituals of human sacrifice. Many also believe that this exclusive club allows successful, powerful people to securely maintain their success and power. The mini documentary in the film alludes to this theory by showing a shot of Jack shaking hands with a powerful Hollywood executive signing some sort of major deal for the show. The prologue also mentions that Madeline dies from lung cancer, Jack falls into a deep depression, and the production of Jack's show is halted for some time. And if, when you were watching this movie, you were already familiar with the Bohemian Grove and how they keep the most famous people on top and how they make ritual sacrifices, you probably pretty quickly made the theory that Jack sacrificed his wife in exchange for the success of the show. And that is exactly the case. It is strongly suggested and I'd say eventually confirmed with the Grove and the devil for his wife to be diagnosed with cancer and eventually die. But when Jack returns from his hiatus, his ratings aren't as high and continue to fall further and further. And after hearing this while watching the movie, I bet you're probably wondering something. I bet you had a really big question in mind. If the Grove is supposed to ensure your success and it requires sacrifice, why did Jack's ratings start falling after his wife died? This is an excellent question, but I can't answer it now. I'm gonna answer it a little later in this video and I think it'll be a lot easier considering the context of everything I say. So bear with me. So in a last desperate effort for Jack to get his ratings back up, he hosts a Halloween episode with some guests who can tap into the supernatural. He first has Christu, who does cold readings, connecting to people in the afterlife. And one of Christu's cold readings tortures and eventually kills him. He at the time mentioned it was a connection to someone named Minnie. We later find out that Minnie, who Christu was sensing from the afterlife, is Madeline. Jack's wife. And to me, this sequence of Christou's suffering was the devil's introduction as a presence 
in this movie. Christou's suffering, as he screamed Madeline's nickname, was a reminder to Jack from the devil that it was his and Jack's collaborative doing that crossed Madeline over into the afterlife that Christou is tapping into. The entire scene is meant to highlight Jack's inability to be honest with himself, failing to admit that Minnie is Madeline, and failing to face the reality of his life-altering actions. And this all ties in with what I said in my first video, the denial that someone lives with when succeeding in the world of show business. Whether satanic or not, there will always be sacrifice required for success. And often, the guilt of those sacrifices will endlessly continue to haunt you. This is so much of what this devil symbolizes in this movie, and most certainly in this scene. We later on hear about the backstory of the leader of a satanic cult, Diabo. Diabo's satanic cult performed a mass suicide sacrifice, and one girl, Lily, was the sole survivor. June is a parapsychologist and author who takes care of Lily, and they are both guests on Jack's show. Lily is the one survivor, but she didn't escape completely unscathed. She now seems to be psychologically and spiritually attached to a demon that her cult reached through their rituals and their sacrifice. She's creepy and awkward with the most off-kilter body language. It's as if she isn't exactly the only person in control of herself. Like there are two different different hands on the steering wheel together. So this demon is always living through her, alongside her, and his presence within her grows and shrinks at different points in time in the movie. And you can see this continuously happening as Lily's personality shifts and switches at different points in time in the film. I would love a spoiler version of this analysis. I've been digging into the Abraxas, Gnosticism, and the symbols used in the movie. Haven't seen anyone touch on it yet. Okay, I'm not in any way an expert on this subject matter, but I do think I know this significance of Abraxas and Gnosticism in this film because, as you said, it is very important for this movie. In this movie, the demon's name is Abraxas. As I mentioned in my previous video, the name Abraxas is actually based on a real religious figure, known to be a super being in Gnostic beliefs. But throughout history, as religions competed with Gnosticism, the idea was spread that Abraxas is a demon. And as a result, that's how most of us now recognize this religious figure. And that's how it is portrayed in the film. Jack convinces June to conjure Abraxas within Lily to prove to the public everything she has always believed in and fought for. That demon possession is real and the victims are in need of a non-traditional, open-minded form of treatment. But it's also very clear that Jack isn't persuading June to fight for what she believes in because he so strongly believes in what she believes in. He's just using that reasoning to justify his most desperate and superficial intentions. He very simply just wants to further increase the excitement of the show and boost the ratings. But as I said in my previous video, Jack uses a wide variety of reasons to justify his immorality. He says he's saving the jobs of his production team, keeping the show on air for his loving fans, and celebrating the legacy of his wife. This justification is something many successful people do to cope with the guilt that comes with everything they gave up. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember the body language between Jack and June implies some sort of romantic history there. Likely, what I theorize is infidelity when Jack was with Madeline. And again, that all ties in with the temptations and the pitfalls that Jack runs into as a victim of success in show business. This entire film is Jack battling with feelings like guilt and greed and lust and temptation all things stemming from the devil biblically. And as Lily is conjured, the demon through Lily reveals he has met Jack before. They're familiar with each other. They've met each other specifically, as Abraxas says, under the tall trees, which is of course referring to the rumored meetings at the grove where Jack made the ritual sacrifice of his wife for success. And to tie in with this, in the real world, Abraxas was always heavily rumored to be a figure of worship for secret satanic cults. And in that later scene, when we go back in the show's footage slowly, frame by frame, we see the ghost of Jack's wife standing behind him. And in this frame, Madeline looks ghostly, but also looks heavenly, like a tranquil angel existing within all of the chaotic hell that's been brought down to this studio. And this personally is my favorite moment in the entire film because it's an incredibly symbolic shot signifying that there is still a deep love within Jack. 
for his wife that survives indestructibly through all of the hellish temptation, pain, and suffering. And then we get a moment that sets the ratings through the roof, but at the ultimate cost. That chaotic climax followed by the most powerfully symbolic sequence in the entire film, the ending. Once Abraxas completely emerges from Lily to cast his reign of terror over Jack, the show suddenly flips into this inverted nightmarish version of itself. And the way I look at all of this is this stage, this studio, and this live studio audience is all symbolic of Jack's mind and everything that lives in it. The executives, the fans, the production team, the belief, the skepticism, the denial that all goes on in there is also going on within Jack all at once. We see Jack looking at an image of himself, symbolizing his continuous self-reflection and insecurity, also symbolizing the more ethical alternate path he could have taken. We see his back turned on the audience, representing the shame he feels for how he ended up. The tranquil, angelic ghost of his wife, existing peacefully within the hellish chaos, as mentioned before. We also see part of the audience step onto the stage and form into a cult with other cult members, of course referring to the exclusive club that Jack was a part of, The Grove. And I think the people in the costumes in the crowd who get a little more focus from the camera represent the demons in Jack's mind that will always capture more of his attention when he reflects on his actions. I don't know why more people haven't picked up on the guy in the skeleton costume. I think it's supposed to be Satan. That's why he doesn't move. He doesn't react. They keep showing him. I think that's the devil himself sitting there in the crowd. Is that what they're implying? And there's even a guy in a devil costume right next to him, which is like the parallel. I'm almost certain that's what was implied. I think this is a wonderful and totally fair theory, and it aligns with everything that I said about the studio symbolizing Jack's mind and everything going on within it. The little demons that Jack battles with throughout the show, and that silent, looming presence of the devil that sits there and haunts him. Your comment also brings me to the question that I said I would answer at the end of this video that I asked way earlier in this video. Jack's show began to decline even after the death of his wife, but it doesn't make sense because the wife was the sacrifice to get success. And I don't believe this is a plot hole. My answer to this question is this is the way that the devil showcases his power over you, even when giving you what you asked for. Jack does eventually get exactly what he wants, with this TV episode being the highest rated episode for him of all time. But it seems like the devil wants to make him wait for it a little bit and worry about it. The momentary decline in Jack's rating is indicative of the devil showcasing that he ultimately has the power within this deal. And more importantly, thematically, it signifies that success through cruelty will always come with an endless feeling of anxiety that it could all be lost at any moment. And then you really have nothing, not even yourself. You'll not only lose your mind, but you'll lose your soul. Sir Christopher Lee, my thoughts, exactly. Still during this delusional ending of the film, Jack is eventually welcomed into an additional section of the studio with his wife on a deathbed. As I said, since the studio and this sequence all represents Jack's mind, it makes perfect sense that she is hidden behind a wall. It symbolizes this enormous element of guilt that Jack is trying to hide at the very back of his mind, unwilling to face, very relevantly tying in with the scene much earlier when Jack wouldn't admit that Minnie was Madeline. At the very end, Jack kills his wife as she asks him to, finally facing the reality of the decision he made at the Grove. And right as Jack kills Madeline, the film cuts to Jack killing Lily and everyone else in the studio as he says something along the lines of, wake up dreamer, over and over again. That final shot and that final quote represent killing everything you lived for in exchange for everything you dreamed of. And from the looks of this film, it never ends up to be worth it. All right, that's my spoiler-filled analysis. If you're interested in a more thematic, non-spoiler version of it with more presentation, I think you'd probably get a lot out of the previous video that I did. Whether you've seen both or you've seen just this one, thank you so much for watching. See you later.